So welcome to another episode of Man in the Shed. What we can do this time? <clears throat> KE Jetronic, more of the same. Potentiometers or pot sensors. Now, most KE units, pretty much all KE units, will have a potentiometer. Now a potentiometer is a little sensor. So it sits inside like so. When the air flap moves, you have five volts on here and then you have middle pin sends power back to the ECU. So what's the ECU do with it? So the ECU gets the feedback from that sensor to the ECU. In turn it gets the feedback from the O2 sensor in the exhaust. It has those two together and within a range in the ECU it will know what voltage it needs to send to our differential pressure actuator or DPA. So once it's got that O2 sensor it then sends a current to this to adjust the amount of fuel that again look for previous videos it splits between so it can go rich or lean to get the oxygen sensor correct or to do you know the best fuel so what's this going to go through don't need that i might cut one apart so we'll come over here and have a look at this in a minute so what we can go through is how to set these how to calibrate them and so when you replace them so like in previous videos, you can adjust the air flap to get it right where it should be with your two measurements. You also need to calibrate your pot sensor, otherwise it could be slightly off now. In the grand scheme of things, the engine will probably work out what it's doing, but it won't always be perfect. So I've got one on test. The air plate's not adjusted anyway, so we can go over there and we'll see what it's doing, the voltage is getting through, how to adjust it, and so forth but we'll pop over here quick have a look at this and you can see more detail so here it is in more detail you've got an arm that moves inside there it's all linked to the air flap so when the air flap moves it runs across these little sweeping ranges now you can see there's a flat spot there and there on both that's pretty much its rest point where it always is and you can see the sort of groove it makes now if you're registering voltage and it's got zero volts up to you know four and a half five volts gets halfway and voltage disappears and then a bit more plate lift it comes back it means this is foobar they are replaceable again there's different types but we'll move over to the test bed now and show you what we mean by adjusting it so here's our unit all rigged up and test ready to go now first off the air plate is nowhere near it should be so you've got a clean gap there we have got i think i measured it is three mil now this sticker says 1.9 plus 1.1 what does that mean? It means at complete rest position like this, this needs to be 1.9 mil from the top of the air plate to, you know, the top of the cone, the clean part. Just in there. So literally that clean part there, that's the top. And then the 1.1 is once this pressure is built up, the 1.1 is the free play of the plate before it touches the plunger. Now they're vital important. So this one is off, you know, I have pre-rigged, pre-taken these screws out. So when you're doing the screws, this has got like a silicon glue in there. Now, you need to take them all out or get rid of all this glue because when you're undoing the screws, you know, you're not, you're trying to adjust the sensor. It's, it's forcing itself back against the rubber. So when you're doing this, get all that goo out. Just have one screw in there to adjust it and nip it up. And then, you know, put a bit of black silicon in there after it's done. So we've got it rigged up. So we just turn the power on. What have we got? So we've got five volts in there, and then we turn the multimeter on. Boop. And we have got 0 0.16 volts, which is incorrect. Now, there's two readings you need to know. One volt and 0 0.7. So this is slightly different to doing it on the bench, but if you're on a car, your air plate is set, we'll reset it in a minute. Once your air plate is set where it should be, you adjust this, you need to adjust it to one volt. So you've got one volt on that, on the multimeter. That is rich, but that's how it gets the car running. Now, once the car's running and warmed up and idling nicely, you then adjust this to 0 0.7 volts, and that's your idle your idle level. So again, on this one, you know, I'll set it to uh, one volts with the plate at rest, pressurized. You know, I'll then put the plate in a idle, you know, simulated idle position, and then I'll adjust this to 0 0.7 volts, and that will be happy days. And that will coincide with our plate lift to our potentiometer, to the um, fuel plunger setting on the back there like the other video, 
and again I'll say the CO screw just because it's ease of ease of adjustment obviously that doesn't technically adjust the CO it just the free plate on this plate but obviously if you do it too far it will make some difference with the CO so just for an example I'm just going to lift the plate so we've got 4.62 volts and it's not cutting out anywhere which is good so let's move on to adjusting this plate so adjusting the plate on this type is undoing that lock nut screwing this in clockwise which puts pressure on the spring there which then raises this plate to where we want it so we're now adjusted we're now sitting at one point it's close to like a measure 1.9 now it looks about 1.5 just below two so you know no more than 1.9 so you know 1.5 to two to you know 1.5 is a good ballpark where you want to be and already this has gone up to 1.16 volts so we're not far off where it should be but now we need to pressurize the system so we'll run everything up um, and get system pressure six bar moving a little bit and then we want to just grab this and lift it You're lifting it until you can feel the plunger. And then trying to measure how far that's lifting. That's about one mil. So that's rest pressurized and that's touching the plunger. You're not talking a lot of voltage, but obviously that makes a difference with the ECU. So we're happy where these are. That's now set at 1.9 and 1.1. Now we want to adjust this down to one volt. Now we're not far off, but we'll give it a little wiggle. So we've got this loosened off now. And again, we can give it a wiggle. You know, you can go where you want to go. So we want to go. Down a bit. All right, I'll set this and come back. It's quite hard to hold that, watch this and film it. So there we are, we're at one volt. 1.02 that's where we're going to go for that's all nipped up now now we're in the position we can start the car and run it obviously this is on a bench so i need to simulate idle position on that air plate bear with so we're at simulated idle position and our plate is at 1.6 volts so we need to give it a little bit because we want that at 0 0.7 that's too far There we go, 0 0.77. Can I get a bit more just to be... Oh, oh you bugger. Right, you're at 0 0.73, so we'll take that. So this is the engine at idle position, nice and warmed up. Our plate is at our idle position, and we're at 0 0.7 volts on our pot centre. So that is that, calibrated, ready to rock and roll. So that is how to calibrate a tensiometer sensor on a KE unit. Now it is very important to get these things right. The basic settings, the closer you can get them to being, prefer, per, 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 to being perfect, the better the readings are going to get to the issue, the better the car is going to perform. So, a couple of things. 1 volt and 0 0.7. Pardon me. So like I said, Fitting a new one on there, get it on there. You know, you can do a little line round if you want to get it in the right place. You know, you've got elongated holes. Get it sat on there. Make sure you've got your one, no more than 1.9 mil from the cone to the top of the plate. Pressurize the system. Make sure you've got no more than 1.1 mil lift between, you know, the plate touching the plunger. You, when you do it yourself, you can feel it touching the plunger. Um, get those right as per the last video, and we are happy with that. Then you can set this to read one volt. Um, pull your boot back, get your multi your pins in there. The centre pin is the voltage you want to be looking at, um, and an earth. So get it to one volts, nip it up. You know, do it nice and tight. Get another tight, tight. Get another one in there so it really is tight, and it's sitting one volts as close as you can get it. Um, then you can run the car up, get the car, get the car running up, get it nice and warm. You know, normal heat cycle. Get the radiator fan to cut in once. 
you know, then the car's warm. Then you can adjust this down to read 0 0.7, and that is your ballpark figure where you want. Now, I'm not just picking these numbers out of the air. Excuse me, it is very hot. Um, I'm not just picking these numbers out of the air. You know, this is from, you know, years of experience. You know, multiple cars worked on, units I've worked on, testing different ones, and uh, I've got publications that would have been in with the dealers back in the day, um, which shows it all in that. Now, a five volt sensor, why doesn't it go to five volts? Well, it just doesn't. It does, however, get to 4.7 volts and then go open circuit, which means it's gone off the scale. Now, that's fine on this because the air plate, unless you've got it really wrong, won't go off scale. So with the air plate physically up, you're at 4.63 volts. I'll put a video in a minute of where it was. Now, why is that measurement important? Well, that 4.6 volts, with it still in the scale, is the air plate topped out physically. That coincides with the um, simulated full load air plate lift, which is less than this. So simulated full load is 4.4, .4, I measured it at. So you've got a 0 0.3 volt leeway. So again, this all marries up to things coming back to how they should do. So you've got the right voltage, you know, the O2 sensor, you know, your air plate set, the air plate lifting diver, X amount of fuel. It all brings it into a nice, a nice line. Pause. So hopefully that answers your questions and shows you how to test these. You know, if you've got a car that's been a bit funny um, and you know, you're putting your foot down and it's a bit kangaroo-y, you can test these just by seeing it should have a nice sweep as from the video seat up to you know four and a half volts if it gets so far and goes open circuit and then picks a voltage again this is what it's doing it so we you know if you're that far off and you're going off the scale on this and the car the car just goes oh, i don't know what i'm doing because it doesn't know where the air plate is so the you know the o2 sensor and the pot sensor readings in the ecu telling the dpa what to do if it goes off scale it hasn't got this reading so it's like oh i don't know what to do so that's why it's good to keep this where it should be and it'll keep the car working right. So this is the same system on, let's say, all okay, KE. So you've got Peugeot, Saab, VW, uh, Audi, RS Turbo, Fords, Porsches, um, Ferraris, uh, RS Turbo again. Porsche, yeah, so a lot of cars have these on. Again, it's the, it's that stepping stone from KJ to KE, you know, to full Motronic, then on to your, your nowadays fully electronic fuel systems. So there we go. Hopefully that answers any questions and shows you how to do this and test it, even if it's just, you no know, a service thing. You know, I mean, you might ask the question, why is the air plate gone off? It only rests on a little metal spring. The amount, the amount of times that air plate hits that spring over... 100,000 miles you know that spring can be you know soft so it needs a bit more adjustment to bring the air plate back where it should be so there we go thanks for watching if you can click subscribe i'm going to get a nice cold drink and hide in the shade because it's very warm see you again bye